What is the biggest upset in MMA history is a question that I was asked in a comments section. And anytime you do a biggest upset, I never interpret it to be a straight question. Because if you're asking me the straight question, that would simply mean who overcame the odds. And the odds are set, uh, set by the guys that make the book. So you would actually talk it about betting odds. And we wouldn't have much of a conversation here. We would just have to look up data. It might surprise you the biggest betting odd that overcame that was actually Terry Sokaju. And he upset Ricardo Arona in pride as almost a 13 to 1 underdog. 12-5, 12-8 underdog. That would actually be the biggest upset in history. And then it's followed by like uh, the night that Ronda Rousey uh, lost to Holly Holm, and it's followed by, you know, D Dillashaw beating Barrow was in there. And then you have Matt Hughes and Matt Sarah. I want to say Sarah was like a, a negative 850 or something the night that he won. So I have to assume that I am not to interpret the question literal, which is just simply numbers, which is simply done by a Google search. I'm, I'm assuming that I'm to answer the question and personalize it from my perspective to mean what loss surprised me the most? And there's a number of them. I mean, the night that Randy Couture took out Tim Sylvia, and I feel like such a traitor in saying this as a guy who's loyal to Randy Couture and Randy's friend and Randy's teammate. But in all fairness, what Randy was going up against in his age, and he's taking on Tim Sylvia, a big size disadvantage, 40-some plus pounds. Randy had been out. Tim Sylvia had been on a streak. And then particularly, you know, Randy never lost a round. If you guys remember that fight, he put Tim Sylvia down in like the first 15 seconds, but then proceeded to push through. Tim Sylvia's fighting back. I mean, that fight was a little bit of a war. That fight was a little bit harder than your eyes might have told you. But if you do remember that night, it was a very big surprise. And as much as Randy was already a star in the sport, that was a major coming out moment. I mean, he started to have some mainstream attention after that. When he went and got that win, like Brett Favre, uh, who was playing for the Packers at the time and was playing into his 40s, Brett Favre was publicly citing Randy Couture as inspiration to his career. And in the world of sports stars, Favre was so far above anybody in MMA that this really, this really grabbed Randy and pulled him up in many ways. That would have to be on my own personal list somewhere. And I would tell you the night that Ronda lost to Holly was very shocking. In many ways, not only because Holly was such an underdog, but it was also a classic battle that we had seen a hundred times before of Master Grappler versus Master Striker. And we'd seen a hundred times before, including a UFC 1 in 1993, that favors the Grappler. And that just wasn't what happened. So the way that Holly, and not that she, that she landed that head kick and put Ronda down, she dominated that fight leading up to it. That fight told a story very early on. I mean, those crosses that Holly was landing clean and changing Ronda, you started to see a story unplaying in front of your eyes. It was, it was similar to the night when Holyfield beat Tyson for me. You started to see this coming. You started, oh my, are my eyes playing tricks? Oh, I am seeing this. Oh, Tyson's not, oh, Holyfield's still pouring on. And then finally you got to conclusion and there was something more dramatic about the story and the way it played out of Holly versus Ronda where you saw it coming and you start to get ready for a reality that you weren't ready to accept. And then the head kick comes. There was something about that that was more dramatic than if Holly, boom, and landed one lucky shot or one good shot, whatever you want to call a shot, but one shot. And that wasn't what happened. So that one sticks out for me. I was there live when Dillashaw beat Barrow. And that was a very big surprise, but that was another one where that fight wasn't close. And TJ took it on short notice and wasn't even supposed to be in there. We had the same managers at the time. I can tell you some of the backstory where, you know, the push into the pole and the managers did this great strategy and even got TJ the fight which was kind of the win. Like, like for our team, it was kind of like a win that he got the fight. I don't know how many of us even thought TJ was going to go out there and win, let alone absolutely dominate that match. So that one sticks out. Um, and I got to tell you another one 
that was very close in the odds. It was only like a two to one separation, but it does go down for me as one of the more meaningful upsets. But that was the night Nate Diaz took out Conor McGregor. And a lot of it was because of the way that he did it. You know, Conor landed those big shots that Conor himself said, look, everybody else I've ever fought, those are fight ending shots. And that son of a bitch took them all. I mean, it was a real cool tip of the hat. Few people lose better than Conor McGregor. Conor McGregor will always give his due. He won't, there's no excuses. There's, he always lets the guy have his moment. And a few days later, he said, I want to rematch. I'm going to take that moment back. But he's always a sporting right there in that, that, that essential vulnerable moment. And I got to think that that was one of the bigger upsets. And I also think history would support me on that because of what the rematch garnered. And I think history would further support me on that because of the uh, suspected trilogy that is likely, because of the state of the 155-pound division, the 170-pound position, and Conor McGregor. I think that Nate Diaz versus Conor... If you don't want to put Conor McGregor in a world title fight at 170 pounds, not at 155, if you don't want to put Conor McGregor in there against the winner of Usman Masvidal, I think the only other card you can play with Connor without having to start a story from the beginning. Why start something from scratch? If you already got something that's 90% done, is in everybody's minds and people want to say, I think the only person you can put him with is Nate Diaz. But the mere fact that you could have this potential trilogy, which is very rare in MMA. I mean, in all truth, it's very rare, more common in boxing. I think that would prove what an upset that first fight was regardless of the two to one favorite. Two to one is somewhat close. Those aren't bad odds. Versus Ahsoka Jew that had to go in there almost 13 to one by example. So I, I would put that fight and I would still put the number one upset of all time. And I don't know that I would actually have a close question. I think there's a gap. I think without question, the correct answer of the surprise in MMA history was when Matt Sarah took out St. Pierre, and it wasn't just because Sarah did that and we weren't giving Sarah enough due. Everybody knew Sarah was a straight-up badass. But George was the greatest of all time, right? It, it wasn't a matter of insulting Sarah. We can give Sarah all of the compliments he deserves. He's still taking on GSP. George also was known for a very specific style of which he could take anybody down at absolutely any time, that, including Josh Koscheck. Like, great and decorated wrestlers was not an issue. George could do none of those things. He could not take Sarah off his feet. He couldn't even close the distance, and Sarah was touching him up. It was just a very surprise, not only outcome, but the physical X's and O's of the fight is not what the world, myself, was expecting.